Hello, welcome to Food Review. Last episode, we talked about the perfect marshmallow. Now this is epic. Let it sit and cool off since it's been in the depths of hell. But today, we're gonna do something a little bit out of the box. We're gonna do the perfect roasted chip. You're probably thinking it's stupid. Trust me, it's good. So let's start off with step number one. Putting the chip on your poker or stick. Now this is the most hardest thing to do when you're roasting your chip, okay? After roasting it. So what you gotta do, you gotta put it right on the tip. Okay, nice and easy, put your finger on it. And then slowly twist and turn as you apply a little bit of pressure on it. And there we go. Just keep twisting it a little bit. A little bit more until it pops through. Damn. All right, there we go. Now we have it on the poker. So now it's the step of roasting the chip. So this is pretty easy. Just put it in the middle of the fire. And as soon as you start seeing the rims turn a bit brown, like about now, that's turning a little bit good. Let's put it in the fire. Yeah, that's it. Now we start turning it to this side. Let it get the nice crispy on this part too. And then there you go. That is your crispy chip. Now you're gonna have to wait a while because it's super hot. Like warning, these code name sizzle chips are really hot and they can burn you. So wait a few minutes before eating. We'll cut back to when it cools down. We're back. It's nice and cool now. And now I'm gonna give my official taste test of Mm, the sizzle chip. I have done this many times before. I know what it tastes like, but I'm just gonna eat it on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tastes exactly <laughs> like a French fry. The salt when it's cooked makes it more taste like a French fry, especially when you know the chip is cooked. I give this 9.5 out of 10. It's pretty good, but it takes a long time, so that's why it's not a perfect score. So thank you for tuning in today on Cooking Review with me and my friend behind the camera, and I'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome to Food Review. Last episode, we did the perfect sizzle chip. Start turning it to this side. Let it get the nice crispy on this part too. Tastes exactly <laughs> like a french fry. But today, we're going to be making the nuggets. Now, first step. Take a donut, donut, not yet a donut, and take your pointy stick and stick it in there. Once it is like so, you hold above fire very rigorously. That is a word. Switch it up. You hold it, but don't catch it on fire. Until it looks like it's wet. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. And, on, and then you turn it around and you let it like, just stay there until that side looks like it's wet, like so. Now it's too hot to take off, so you're gonna take your handy dandy choppers, oh my that's what I call them, God. and you rip it off. Now you put this down and time to taste our dough nugget. Mmm, scrumptious, delicious. You know what this tastes like? It tastes like a donut. But less donut tea. Now, I rate it 8 out of 10 for its amazing texture and taste. Would kids like this? I, I say it's uh, 13 and over, just in case. Uh, burning hands, right? And um, thank you for in, uh, joining us in this installment of Food Review. And next time, we are going to be doing another campfire cook along. So, goodbye for now. Oh, oh, hi there. Welcome back to Food Review. On the last installment of this, we did dough nuggets. Take your pointy stick and stick it in there. Once it is like so, you hold above fire. This episode, we will be making the perfect sizzle sandwich. And you might be asking yourselves, am I mentally and emotionally prepared for this? I'm gonna answer that with one question. Are you? No. Anyway, so the first thing we have to do is take a, an ordinary chip and you put it in between these clampers. If you do have a rod, you can stick it through, but it's a very delicate procedure. Now, you take this 
gently, very carefully. Now listen, this is the most important part. You must have a crisp brown taste. And when you taste it, it should taste like french fries. Okay, French, we're not sponsored. Generously, you put it above the flame, not in the center. Until it gets nice. See that brown around the edges? That's what you want. That, that's what you need. Ooh, look at that. You see that? Now, that's one chip in the market. Next, you take an ordinary chip and rinse, wash, and repeat. <laughs> You put it back. Now this, this is the part that's new to us. You take the marshmallow, put it in between the crampers, and we make the perfect marshmallow, but we don't stop and eat it. We save it. Now let's do that. Isn't it? Perfect. Now let's just let it cook for a second. Nice fire. There we go. Take this. Yeah, you should see that. If you don't see that, you, you didn't do it right. You take this off and put this, your handy dandy, well, not clampers anymore, more of like a squishy, uh, down. And this is the hardest part. You take the final chip. So, after that explosion, we should have this. Now, I will now taste it. I might explode. Nice texture, crunchy yet soft. I would rate it a nine out of ten. The best rating we've had so far. That sizzle chips was nine point five out of ten. <laughs> Never mind. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Food Review. Next episode, we will be cooking something else within the fire. Bye bye now. On this episode, we're going to be doing the ham dog, my own personal creation. So, first step, you're going to want to take the ham dog and put it on the stick, not to the side, but directly into the middle. Once you're done that, you take your ham dog on the stick and you put it not in the fire, but above the fire, but just a nice middle, you know, the middle there. And you do it until it blisters all around. And so we're going to wait. We are waiting. And there you go. You have your perfectly roasted ham dog with, as you can see, blisters. Now, once you're done that, you will take your trusty hamburger bun and open it. Now, once you have done this, this is a very delicate procedure. Put it Take the other part of the bun. Put it there. Squeeze it together. And take out the pan. Once you have done that, ladies and gentlemen, you now have the ham dog. And now I will be asking my you know fellow friends. Yeah, Mom. Uh-huh. Yeah, really? No, no, really. Yes. Now, I will be giving this delectable treat to my friend, Tex206. Hello. Now, I'm gonna try 
Pies for Teens signature ham dog. Hot dog on a hamburger bun. I don't know why no one has come up with this. It's good genius. So let us taste this beautiful delicacy. Delicious. Just like a hot dog. A little bit on the burn side, but you know what? That works. And it doesn't have an aftertaste. You know, I'm going to give this ham dog a 9.5 out of 10. The second best we have so far, tied with the sushi chip, and I don't think of a better second place than the ham dog. So I'd like to thank you all so much for watching this episode of Food Review. We'll see you all next time. Bye bye now. <clears throat> oh, didn't see you there. Welcome back to Food Review. Last time we made the legendary ham dog. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have and today we're going to be doing the crispy coin so what you're gonna need to do is I'm gonna start from scratch because you gotta know the process step by step okay so you take a half a coin you could do a full coin it's up to you if you're feeling a bit risky put the full coin and I have it risking up and into the pit of fire but get your pointy stick and then just stick it in there, <clears throat> like this. Should be nice and flexible, should not be falling off. Got it? Pay attention to this coin, all right? Not falling off, that means it's good to go. So then we turn to our trusty bonfire over here, and then we roast it on top of the fire, just like we do every time on Food Review, as tradition. So we just let it sit a little bit. That was unexpected. Um, um, my kernel corn over the fire, it turned into, it turned into popcorn. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, so, you know what? It's okay. It, the kernel corn has turned, the crispy corn has turned into the crispy corn pops. So, you know what? Let's try out the crispy corn pops. Let's see how it is. Hmm. You know what? It tastes salty. Even though I didn't put salt on the corn, it tastes salty. It's just pretty surprising. You know what? I it tastes a bit of crispy in there too. So, you know what? I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's pretty good. And I suggest you do it too, but do keep in mind you might want to have an audience around just so they explore with popcorn too. So, thank you for joining me on this episode of Food Review, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye now. Why, hello there. Welcome back to Food Review. On the last episode, you saw my best friend John making crispy corn. So, we just let it sit <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be making SpongeBob House on fire because of SpongeBob. And it's a very delicate recipe, so follow along and bring your own pitchfork, preferably a cleaner one. So let's get it started. What you wanna do is get a premium pineapple. So none of this with, with the brown, no, 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 no. Something like this. Now would you just zoom in on that? Look at that, it's perfect, okay? So what you would like to do is impale it with your stick. Like so, on the stick. And you gently push it over the fire, not in the fire, on the outside, over the fire, okay? And roast it, make sure all of its juice gets out. And through trial and error, we found out that the best time would be about a minute. So, we'll be back in a minute. See you then. Well, hello there. Welcome back. By now you'll have your perfect SpongeBob house on fire. And why not give this buddy a try? 
So gently take it off your stick and pop it in. Don't leave me! I'm too chewy! Wow, it was really good. It was really good. It's the perfect mix of sweet yet burnt. Amazing. What I would rate it? An 8.5 out of 10. A very good score. Thank you for watching this episode of Food Review. Next time we'll... No, no, there is no next time. Never mind. This is it. But thank you for watching. And I'll send you off with SpongeBob's National Anthem. <laughs>